In this video, we'll be introducing the idea of curves defined by parametric equations. So what we mean by parametric curves um, is that we're going to have a certain way of representing our curves that gives us some additional information other than just the x and y coordinates. So we'll be using three variables, x, y, and a parameter variable, often t, to represent a curve in the xy plane. So our parametric equations will look like the following. We write x equals f of t and y equals g of t, which are called our parametric equations, where t is our parameter. So this gives us the um, horizontal and vertical components of each point um, given a parameter or given an, an input t. So what this allows us to do is not only graph um, maybe what our graph here looks like, but to also say some information about in what direction is that graph being traced out. And if I think about a little particle here traveling along this curve, how fast is that particle going? Okay, so parametric um, equations are, are often used in physics to express some additional information where t is, say, the time. Think about some sort of projectile motion. I'm launching some ball on a parabolic arc. Um, but now with this um, parametric equation representation, I don't just have the position of the ball, I can say the position at a particular time and how fast that ball was traveling um, as well. So let's finish the definition of our parametric curves first before we look at any further examples. Um, this should say t is the parameter. Okay, so what we're seeing about these um, parametric equations is that as t varies, the point on the graph given by xy equals f of t comma g of t varies and traces out our curve c. Called a parametric curve. So we have our parametric equations that give us the graph of our parametric curve. And this curve is being traced out in a specific direction. As indicated by the arrows that we have in our um, example above. So anytime we're going to be drawing the graph of a parametric curve, we'll have not only the picture of the graph, but also the arrows to indicate how the graph was traced out. Okay, so we'll always use arrows to indicate direction, where direction is also sometimes called the orientation of the curve. Okay, so before we get to an example where we'll go through the process of sketching a parametric equation and also learning what it means to eliminate the parameter to go from the set of parametric equations to an equation with just x and y, um, we just want to look at an example of um, what happens when we might compare two different parameterizations. So here I have the graph of an ellipse, um, but I can trace it out in a variety of different ways here. Um, so here we're just sort of interested in the fact that I have these two points traveling along my curve that represent two different types of parameterizations, and they're tracing out the curve at different speeds. So in an example where you might get to choose the parameterization, um, you'd have to consider um, how fast your particles should be moving for the application that you have, where they should be um, at different points in time. Okay. Um, you'll also see that you'll sometimes have 
examples where you'll be asked to create a parameterization um, and note that there is no one correct answer if you're just asked to create a um, some sort of set of parametric curves that will give the same graph. If you have additional parameters um, like how fast you want the particles travel to travel or in what direction then you have a few more restrictions to work with. So we'll see some examples like that later. So for this initial example we want to focus on um, being able to eliminate the parameter. So here I'm given these equations of x equals 1 minus t squared, y equals t minus 2, where t is between negative 2 and 2. So I want to try to eliminate the parameter to find what we call a Cartesian equation. That means an equation with just x and y of that curve. And then we also want to sketch the parametric curve um, that's given by these equations and use arrows to indicate direction. So for the eliminating the parameter step, okay, notice here I have x is 1 minus t squared, and y is t minus 2, I can use a little bit of substitution. So if y is t minus 2, that means t is y plus 2. So I can say x is 1 minus y plus 2 squared. So it looks like my curve here is going to be some part of a parabola. So I can use what I know about conic sections now and put this into standard form. So I can say this is um, x minus y equals negative y plus 2 squared. So I see this is going to be a horizontal parabola. So this is some of the benefit of doing the eliminate the parameter. I get a form where I can recognize what that graph is. Um, with vertex 1 comma negative 2, and I have that value outside here being negative, so I know it's going to be a parabola that opens up to the left. Okay. So that gives us some information to help with our sketch. But I also, in terms of doing this sketch, I'm going to want to know in what direction that curve is being traced out. So the best way to do your sketch is to use a combination of a table of values to help you with direction and eliminating the parameter um, in cases where that makes sense so that we can um, know what the general shape or the general picture of that graph should look like. So here I'm going to plug in a few values for t. Notice that t is ranging here between negative 2 and 2. So I can plug in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And find out what my corresponding x and y values are. So when t is negative 2, we will get x is negative 3 and y is negative 4. Plugging it into our parametric um, equations up here. When t is negative 1, we'll have x is 0, y is negative 3, t is 0, we'll get 1, negative 2, t is 1, 0, negative 1, and when t is 2, negative 3, 0. Okay, so we can go ahead and sketch those points. So let's see, I have the point negative 3, 4, negative 4. Okay, so we get a point down here. Okay. And then we have the point 0, negative 3, so we have a point here. We have the point 1, negative 2, so we have a point right here. Um, we have 0, negative 1, okay, and then we have negative 3, 0. Okay, so notice that the first point that I started with was down here at negative 3, negative 4, and I know that this is shaped like a parabola and opening up to the left, so I can connect my dots here like this, but then I'm going to put the arrows here that I started out here when t was equal to negative 3. Here at the vertex I have t is 0, and then it went back out again here to get to that parameter location where t is equal to 2. Okay, So to complete the question here about the Cartesian equation, it's not entirely correct to just say x minus 1 equals negative y plus 2 squared, because that would mean the whole parabola, okay, going um, infinitely long in, in on either end of this parabola here. That's not what I want. I want just the portion of the parabola here um, where it looks like my x values are between um, negative 3 and 1. So where x is between negative 3 and 1, and it looks like the y bounds there are between negative 4 and 0. Okay, so when we're doing these parametric 
um, equations and converting to a Cartesian equation, okay, but there may be some bounds on our parameter here that mean I only actually have a portion of that um, Cartesian equation, and so I'll need to include bounds for x and y to indicate what portion of that graph corresponds to my parametric curve. Okay, so keep watching these videos just to see some further examples of working with parametric equations.